Give him one more praise for what he's done. Come on. You got to believe it. You got to praise him for it. Come on. You got to thank him for it. You might not see it with your physical eyes, but, but you're receiving it. Come on. With your spiritual eyes. Come on. It's the breakthrough. Come on. It's right now. The victory is right now. The freedom's right now. The peace is right now. In the name of Jesus. Peace, Father. Rest, Father. Healing, Father. Victory, Father. Breakthrough, Father. Salvation, Lord. You cannot get a breakthrough that you can't let out of your mouth first. If you let the enemy control your mouth, he controls your destiny. Right now, someone needs to repent for complaining. And you've been saying, well, you know, I got a right to complain. Things are bad. And what he's saying is, you're complaining and all you're doing is magnifying your problem instead of magnifying your God. Come on, is there anybody ready to just start praising God now? Well, it's difficult, but I'm going to praise God now. I'm going through a tough time, but I'm going to praise God now. I'm going to go through a valley, but I'm going to learn how to praise God in a valley. I've learned how to praise God in a mountaintop, but I need to learn how to praise God in the tough times, in the valley. I'm a praiser in season, out of season. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, somebody needs to get the word of God back in your mouth. where you're headed by what you're talking about and some of us are bound by fear because your mouth is full of fear we got to learn how to get a confession of faith and hold on to it we got to stop confessing what we're seeing and we start need to start confessing what we're believing There's some people in here you should be working for the news agency. Because you do a play-by-play -play on every problem you got. And everybody else's problems. But it's time to start praising God. And not just acknowledge our problems, acknowledge our God. Give him one more, one more praise. He's worthy. Awesome, awesome. God is good. We'll get into the word right now and... Lisa and I are so glad to be back in the house of God. We, we've been on vacation. We miss you guys so much. And, and we've been on vacation for two weeks. And it probably felt longer than that. But it's been two weeks. And we're glad to be home. And this is our home. And you are our family. And we love you so much. And, and you know, everywhere we go, we're with God. But there's nothing like being with your church family. You understand that? I'm glad to be home, and I, I love, love you guys, and I want to thank every one of you for just doing such a great job and supporting, and there was a time where I felt like I couldn't leave the church because it felt like it would just fall apart, you know, but we got great leaders now, we got a great church, and the church is growing when I'm, so it's just when I'm gone, which is great. Every one of the, let's give a hand for all the speakers, our, our, our pastors that spoke, they did such a great job. And so proud of every one of them. So proud of you. And all right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for what you've done, what you're doing in our lives every day. And I thank you, Lord, that you're not done. Right now, we're in the process of getting to know you better. And the more we know you, the more we love you, and the more we can show others who you are. Reveal yourself to us through your word. Who are you? God, who are you? We want to know. Show us. Reveal yourself to us today. We not only pray for our church, we pray for all the churches in the surrounding area. 
because we're in this together. We pray for the Rock Church. We pray for Emmanuel Baptist. We pray for the Victory Outreaches. We pray for all the Calvary Chapels. We pray, Father, for every church in this area, Abundant Living, and Father, and Sandals Church, and Harvest, and all these churches that are serving you and bringing in a harvest. We come against every spirit of division that would try to divide us when we're on the same team and have the same Father. We rebuke the spirit of division. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we'll be an army marching together with a vision to carry out your purpose and honor and love one another as parts of your body. Have your way today in this service. Speak, Father, Holy Spirit, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Let's give a hand for our worship team as well. I know they don't do it for an applause, but I thank God that they're doing their part. And how are you guys doing today? Someone said, I'm doing great. You know, there's a time in your life you're not, you're not faking it. It's just you got to save by faith. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great by faith. And, and I know that my best days are ahead of me. I know that because I serve a good God. Someone say, I serve a what? And today, that's what I want to talk to you about. God is good. There was a saying that we used to say back in the day, day. God is good all the time. God is good. He is good. And he's always good because that's who he is. It's not something he does. It's who he is. We serve a good God. So we're going to turn to James chapter 1 and for you that are maybe new here, we're actually reading verse by verse. We're going through the, ver uh, the book of James right now. And we're in James chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 16 through 18. I'll get through as much of it as I can today. And it says this. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. I want to start with the first sentence. So don't be misled. And there's just a simple statement here. We can be misled. Even mi believers can be misled. James is encouraging us to be aware of the thoughts, conversations, content, media, teachings, and people we are exposing ourselves to because some of the content that we're digesting is corrupted with deception. Do not be misled. misled. That word misled means to be led astray or be deceived. You know what's the worst thing about being deceived? You don't know you're deceived. And the majority of the people on earth are deceived. We do, we do, and we are fighting against an enemy, and his name is called Satan, but one of his nicknames is called the deceiver. What he comes with is ideas that sound good, arguments, messages, and he wants us to meditate on them, consume them, agree with them, and therefore we are deceived. There's some things we can't afford to be deceived about. You can't afford to be deceived about who you are, who God is, and your eternal life. You might have missed something that had to do with the team you're, you're rooting for. I rooted for the wrong team. Who cares? But when it comes to your eternity, you got to make sure you're not misled. Misled means to be deceived or to be led away from truth. 
That means that you could be here right now believing in truth, but there's an assault on every single person on earth, an assault of deception, ideas. And this is the, this is the truth. God doesn't change his values and morals, even though the world is changing their values and morals. There's churches as a whole are being deceived and they're gobbling up the deception and passing it on to their congregants. Don't think that you can't be deceived because one third of the angels that were with God followed Satan, they were deceived. Imagine being an angel with God and Satan has a conversation with you. His name wasn't Satan in heaven. His name was Lucifer or angel of light. And those that know Spanish, luz means light. So he was an angel of light. He began to have conversations with angels in heaven and somehow he sold them on the idea, leave God and follow me. Satan is still trying to do that today, leave God and follow me. But why would anyone want to follow Satan? Because Satan gives you temporary freedom and temporary satisfaction for long-term bondage and long-term destruction. So many people are living for a moment and they think that's the way to live, but they were somehow deceived. Satan uses deception to lead us away from God and his people. What does Satan use deception for? To lead us away from God and his what? And his people. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen 13, it says, But now I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived, who was deceived? By the serpent's clever lies. Who's the serpent? Satan. Your thoughts may be corrupted and may lose your single-hearted devotion and pure love for Christ. So the scripture is saying that we could get to the point that we could be deceived and lose our fire and devotion to God. There's two signs that you might be deceived. Sign number one is you no longer want to be around other Christians. One of the ways we know we're deceived is that we no longer worship together with God's people and no longer see God's word, number two, as the ultimate authority and truth in our lives. So I want you to guess, how do you know you're deceived? You no longer want to fellowship with God's people. See, deceived people say stuff like this. They have conversations like this. I don't need to go to church to follow God. They'll say stuff like this. I believe that the Bible is written by man, so therefore it has mistakes. It needs to be updated. God does not update his word. His word is complete. His word is perfect. His word is absolute. His word is truth today, truth tomorrow, truth forever. We got too many wishy-washy, deceived, so-called Christians. That they believe the word of God when it's convenient for them. As long as the word of God does not mess with their lifestyle. Be careful that you're not choosing a lifestyle over truth. Be careful that you're not choosing a relationship over truth. Someone say deception. So I'm afraid, it says, I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's clever lies, your thoughts may be corrupted. Every single one of us, our thoughts have been corrupted one time or another. How many know that? How many of you were ever sold on a really dumb idea? And you did it anyway. I won't get caught. Yeah, right. Or the voice says, you won't get caught. You're going to get away with it. Or a young lady says, 
I know he ain't right, but I'll change him. You can change him. You're a powerful Christian. You're full of the Holy Spirit. You could right now, right now, you're an evangelist. Win him for the Lord. It's a mission from God. It was not a mission from God. It was a, it was a compromising, misleading lie from Satan. You guys understand that? Okay, so now, the misled, this is the problem with being misled, do not see the promises of God come to pass in their lives. They don't see the peace of God, the miracles of God, the wisdom of God, the provision of God, the healings of God, the victories of God, etc. The misled, I want you to get this, those that are misled are being led away from the power of God. Led away from the blessings of God. That's why we need to make sure we're not misled. So how do we know, how do we have a gauge of whether, of of truth? Because truth nowadays is a moving target. They'll they'll say this, what is true for you might not be true for me. What they're saying is there's no absolute truth. It's a moving target. It all depends on the evolvement of our society. Some of us are getting our truth from society instead of getting our truth from the source. But now the big question is, if I'm counseling you and we're behind closed doors, how do we settle an argument when we have divided opinions? The way I see it, another person says, well, the way I see it. And the other person says, what I think. And the other says, what I think. So how do we know what is truth? Do we go to the doctors? Do we go to the philosophers of the day? Do we go to our laws? Do we go to the government? Where do we go to find absolute truth? Truth never changes. Facts do. It might be a fact right now that you ain't right. But the truth is, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. What I mean, mean, truth can change a fact. I love truth because truth is power. So what is truth? And I want to just keep it real simple. God's word is truth. What is truth? What's truth? I'll say it again. What's truth? If you do not get that in your life right now, you will be misled. If you gobble up the lie that starts trying to demarginalize the word of God, make the word of God not perfect, not absolute truth, you are already deceived. Why would someone want to say that the word of God is not absolute truth? The reason someone would want to say the word of God is not absolute truth is because they don't want to be accountable to it. We got to be aware that we're in the last days. Someone say last days. I'm not trying to give you a shouting message. I'm trying to give you some backbone. I'm trying to give you some direction. I'm trying to give you some wisdom. I'm trying to get you to the point that you don't start this race, but you finish this race and you finish it stronger than you started, that you don't wear out in the middle of your struggle, in the middle of your battle, in the middle of all the resistance that's coming your way. You are in a fight, son. You are in a fight, daughter. And God is saying the only thing that's going to get you through is not your opinions. It's not society. It's going to be the truth of my word stand on my word and you will stand though the storms come though the rain comes beats against the house it was built on the truth of God's word you might be a minority in this world but you're going to be a majority in the power realm someone say truth 
Look, John 17, 17 says this. Your word is truth. What does it say? So where do we get our truth from? So if I'm counseling you, before we start diving into the issues, what she said, he said, they did, what well, did, but opinions. I want to establish a foundation where we get in our absolute truth from first. Because if we're not getting our truth from the word of God, there's no use for us to talk because we're going to go around in circles because everyone has an opinion. Everyone has a perspective. They'll say like this, the way I see it. Well, that's fine. But the way you see it might be all messed up because your eyes are full of deception. Right? Okay, so let's look at this. So what's truth? What's truth? Your word is truth. So make them holy by the truth. So what he's saying, as we study the word of God, we study the Word of God, we believe the Word of God, we apply the Word of God. What it does, it makes us holy. What does truth do? Makes you what? What does holy mean? It makes you separated or devoted. When someone's holy, this is what happens. They're sold out and they know this. I belong to God. Say with me. I belong to God. Say with me. I I live for his purpose. Say it with me. I do what he says. I live by the word. There it goes. Someone say the word. Not opinion, not religion, the word. See, if you don't know the word, you can be easily deceived. And this is what we're running into. We have a lot of believers that don't know the word. And if, I want you to go deeper. If you don't know the word, you don't know God. I'll go deeper. Your love for the word will determine your love for God. How much you love the word is how much you love God. What? It's getting quiet up in this church today. Okay. How much you love the word is how much you love what? Don't be deceived into thinking you can have a real deep relationship with God and not have a deep relationship with his word. Well, it's getting real quiet up in here. How long have you been a Christian? Okay, someone said a long time. Or long enough. Do you know what the Bible says? Some of you should already be teaching the word, but you can't teach the word because you don't know the word, so we have to keep on going over the basics. Some would say, know the word. See, if you know the word, you cannot be misled because what's going to come out of your mouth is not repeating what you heard on a YouTube video. You're going to repeat what you read in the Word, what you studied in the Word. I don't want you to repeat Pastor Marco. I want you to repeat the Word. It is written. We got too many fanboys and fangirls of ministries. It's almost like you worship a ministry, you worship a denomination, you worship a group of people, because you talk about them more than you talk about the word. 
And then there's no wonder we keep making bad decisions and are led astray from our devotion to God because we're led astray. You just don't go astray. You're being led astray. And how are you led astray? By deceptive thoughts, deceptive ideas. And you're led astray because you don't know the truth. What fights a lie is truth. What fights a lie is what? What is truth? What is truth? What is truth? I, I, I ran into a sensitive issue this week. Um, I'm, I'm doing some decoration um, in my house, like put a new furniture, stuff like that. So I like going to Palm Springs because they got a lot of nice stuff over there. So we, go to, we drive to Palm Springs and I, I go into a store and when I go into the store, um, all the guys mostly there are homosexuals. So I go in and just start talking. I'm looking for furniture. And the, through the conversation quickly, he finds out I'm a pastor. So as soon as he finds out I'm a pastor, he starts hitting me up. I went in there for furniture. I don't know, I might get into a deep conversation. So he hits me up and he says, do you know that there's been ministries out there? And they've now like renounced their words saying that a homosexual can change because they've come to the conclusion that a homosexual cannot change. So that's the conversation I run into. Two minutes into a store. And I began to talk to him and I believe our ministry is called to reach every group and I love homosexuals. Like, I'm so called to them. They know when I talk to them, I talk to them with absolute love because every one of us need love, not religion. That's all, they, that's all everybody needs. That group is no different than any other group that we might identify ourselves with. I want you to understand this. Everyone needs love. And I know right now, oh man, you're touching a touchy subject. Well, God touches touchy subjects with his love. So when that started happening, this is what happened in my heart immediately. Love just started pouring out. I could just, I could feel like a river just, here it goes. I go, this guy's going to be loved like he's never been loved before. He's in danger right now. He is in danger of experiencing the presence of God right here in this store because I am right now full of love and full of truth. Do you know if you tell truth and you don't say it in love, it's offensive? And I'm not saying everybody won't receive what you're saying, but some of us, are not getting the point across because your packaging is so bad. You have truth, but your truth is wrapped up in pride and judgmentalism and criticism. And, I, and get this, they're going to read that a mile away from you. See, what he was doing was testing my spirit. I know what he was doing. This was going to turn into an argument or was going to turn into ministry, ministry opportunity. It was up to me, though. So I talked to him and he, you know, he said his thing and he said it's his old little spiel that he's probably told every single Christian and most Christians probably just shut up because they don't have no truth. See, when, when you're full of the word, not only you're full of truth, you're full of conviction. You don't waver. You don't get scared when you're faced with deception. So I told him. I, I know his name, but I don't want to say his name, but I, I talked to him and I go, you know, you know what the word of God says is that we were all a people with no identity and then we became God's people. 
I go, you know, this is what we don't want to do. We don't want to get our identity from our desires and our lusts. You are not your lusts. You were created to get your identity as a son and daughter of God. So I told him, you know, what you're dealing with and what I'm dealing with and what you're dealing with and what I'm dealing with and what you're dealing with and what I'm dealing with is the same thing, lust. What I mean by that is I have desires within me that are lustful desires. And just because I have those desires, I am not those desires. I am not my failures. I am not my desires. I am not my weaknesses. I am not my shortcomings. I do not get my identity from my desires and from my appetites and from, I am not that. And then I told him, you know, Paul, there's a scripture that, that says this. It says that there was a man named Paul in the Bible, and he said this. He goes, the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I, I do. He goes, man, there's just a war inside of me. And I know you have a war inside of you just like I do. But I made up my mind that I'm not going to be defined by my lust. I'm not going to give in to my lust. And I'm not going to go, I'm going to resist my lust. I'm going to, because I want my identity to be in God. That's not your identity. That's your desire. He goes, but do, do you mean I have to fight the rest of my life? Of course, I got to fight lust the rest of my life. Pastor, you fight lust? Yeah, I fought lust. I fight lust. He said, well, how do you fight it? Every day. He said, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, I just went to Puerto Rico. And I'm not sitting there, you know, I'm, I'm going to the beaches that everybody else is at the beaches. <laughs> Women are saying, what, what, what? I'm, I'm just saying and these people don't dress in nun suits. I wish they did. They need to have nun bathing suits. I'm going to come up with that. Nun, like you dress like a nun. You have a veil and all black right here. And you wear their bathing suit underneath it. But that's not the way it is. I mean, people are actually almost showing up naked to the beach nowadays. So what am I going to do? <laughs> I got two options. I could lust. <laughs> oh my gosh, this world is so corrupt. <laughs> Come on, is this real? I'm just saying it's real. And what I'm saying is whether you're, you're dealing with homosexuality or you're dealing with an adultery or you're dealing with pornography or you're dealing with a girl in a G-string on the beach. I'm just saying that's what I saw over there. <laughs> what I got to do? I got to fight it for the rest of my life and I'll fight it the rest of my life because that will not be my identity that will not drive me that will not lead me and I want to experience the peace of God I want to experience the power of God I want to experience the promise of God I want to experience the ministry of God I want to experience what everybody else is looking for and by the end of that conversation I told him this until you find your identity in God as a child of God that's the issue you're going to be empty and searching and you know you're empty and searching. And you know what he told me? You're right. And then at the, while we're talking, he goes, oh, 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 we can't talk about this in the showroom floor. I go, I'm not talking about it. You're talking about it. I go, I'm here for furniture. <laughs> so I leave and I'm going, all right, then let's go. I'm looking at furniture. I'm not going to be forcing none on you. So I go look for furniture, and lo and behold, he comes back to me. Hey, hey, you know what I was thinking was, my family needs some help, you know, and they need God. I mean, we're a messed up family. I go, okay. 
So I go, okay. So we talk a little bit more, and I start ministering again about him and his family, and, and then I get away again. I'm here for furniture. <laughs> and then I go off again. He comes back again. I don't buy nothing, but he was thanking me. He, and he, he goes, well, in front of his friends, he goes, hey, thanks for coming in. Hey, and also, I want to just thank you for that other conversation. <laughs> and you know that other conversation? You know why he loved us so much? Because it gave him hope. It, it, come on. It, it gave him love. It gave him truth. Truth and love. And you know what? He, and I told him, I go, you know what? I, I told him when I left, I go, today, this was more than business. I go, today, I made a friend. You're my friend. And, and he goes, for sure. He goes, for sure. And you know what? On this Monday, I'm going to go see him. I'm going to give him my card. He's, come on, he, he just was one truth away. Come on, a little love experience away from a major breakthrough in his life. And his identity will no longer be his lust. His identity will be that he is a child of God that was created for great things and for great purpose. And he can experience power, love, and peace, and freedom that we're all looking for. And if you're looking for love, peace, freedom true joy and purpose you're not going to find it on the, in a blunt you're not going to find it in a bar you're not going to find it in a strip club you're not going to find it on the beaches of Puerto Rico I'm telling you you're not going to find it there but you're going to find it in your relationship with God because this is what I know that whatever you're going to to make you happy or fulfill you whatever lust you're running to is misleading you because it's promising you fulfillment but it's an empty pit and no matter how much you go there you need more and you need more and you need more and that's why Jesus said come to me all that are weary tired and I'll give you rest come to me all that are thirsty and I'll give you drink if you're thirsty for the wrong things come to Jesus and let him quench your thirst, make you new, forgive you your sins, and give you a brand new start. How many of you God is good? Let's not be misled. Gabriel, could you close us out, please? Gabriel, Gabriel, close us out. I want to let you know I love you. Wednesday, come on out. Friday, guys, I'm going to talk about lust versus loyalty. It's going to be good. Either going to be loyal or lustful. It's going to be good. We're going to show you how to overcome it, too. Awesome. Let's thank our pastor, man, for really... Sowing into us the word of God. Let's all stand up. You know, today we really learned about how good God is, how loving he is, how real he is. We learned right now that God is the truth. You know, Jesus said something like this. He said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, because of all of the sin in our lives, through our decisions, through our lifestyles, it disqualified us for heaven. It disqualified us to spend eternity with God forever and ever. And out of God's love, his unconditional love, he said, I'm going to make a way for you to be in heaven with me forever and ever and ever. I'm going to make that way through my son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is going to come to this earth. He's going to live a perfect life. And he's going to die. He's going to sacrifice his life for your sins that you committed. Get this, not the sins that Jesus committed because he lived a perfect life, for the sins that you did commit. He said, I'm gonna pay this price. I'm not gonna ask you to pay the price. Some of us right now, we're trying to pay the price. 
Some of us right now, we're feeling the weight of, the, of our sin. We're feeling the guilt. We're feeling the shame of our decisions. We're, be, we're being terrified from our past mistakes, full of regret, no peace. But Jesus said, I will take all of that from you. I will restore you. The ministry of Jesus Christ is to restore us back to the Father. And he's saying, I will restore you today to your Father. If you would open up your heart, if you would confess me as Lord, as Savior, I will restore you. It's not just for right now. Expand our thinking, expand your mind. We're talking about an eternal perspective. Forever and ever and ever and ever, you're gonna live somewhere. Jesus saying, why don't you live with me? I prepared a home for you. I prepared a place for you that you can be with me forever. If you guys could all bow your heads and close your eyes and just ponder about that scripture, John 46, where Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord, as your Savior today, you have right now to do that. You have a moment right now that God created to restore you he is hope he is peace he is love and he's after you if you want to receive Jesus if you're saying God I need to be forgiven of my sins I'm gonna to count to three and I want you to just boldly just reach your hand out and just raise your hand if that's you one I already see hands raised two three if that's you raise your hands if you're saying i want to be forgiven of my sins i see you right there i see you i see you praise god praise god I, I, is there anyone else i see a couple more i see some more praise god i see you with your with your family this is for every single one of us i want you guys to go ahead and those that raise your hand I personally want to pray with you right here and we want to continue this relationship. If you could make your way down here to the front with us and let's give them a hand as they make their way up here. Come down to the front. experienced as a man of God is just seeing people come to Jesus for the very first time just I mean church if we're not reaching people if we're not if we're if this is not happening we're not fulfilling the purpose that we have as a church and I just thank God that we have a church that's saying we're after everyone. We want everyone to know who Jesus is. We want everyone to experience the love and power of Jesus Christ. And for those of you guys that are up here right now, I'm so proud of every single one of you. You're going to see that by far this is the most important decision that you've ever made in your life. The greatest decision that you've ever made in your life. 
Church, let's all stretch our hands out to them and we're gonna go ahead and pray. And all of you that are up here, I want you guys to just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I choose today to follow you. Please forgive me of all of my sins. I repent and I turn away from my sins today. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Transform me and use me to share the love and the good news of Jesus Christ to my family, to my friends, and those around me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. We're so proud of you. We love every single one of you. If you said that prayer in your seats and maybe you didn't get to come up, make your way up here. We love you guys. Get connected. If you need any extra prayer, come on up here. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you.